What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Most of the crypto markets are starting to have a bit of a recovery. We do have BNB, Ethereum, Solana, Uniswap all doing quite well. Bitcoin still hanging around those same levels. Dogecoin obviously in the deep red today. We were expecting somewhat of a pullback after that insane exuberance. However, Bitcoin is still not really able to recover higher after we we had this fall. So are we looking for another lower leg down? Now, there are some analysts calling for some lower Bitcoin price action. And I do want to talk about one thing that the bulls have to do today to reclaim this bullish momentum for Bitcoin or else things could get a little bit shaky. And on top of that, there is one thing specifically happening right now that is actually quite bad for Bitcoin. You might have already figured it out. But I do want to point this out and also a word of caution. If you are a new investor to cryptocurrency, there are definitely some crazy pumps happening right now. A lot of shit coins going absolutely insane, but we're also seeing major dumps as well. So I do want to add a little bit of caution to that as well. But we are going to talk about what is happening with Bitcoin. Should we be getting excited or is this actually setting up for another lower leg down? So all that in today's video, if that sounds good to you, you know what to do if you're not subscribed definitely consider it and without further ado let's dive into the charts now you can see right here we still have this insane cme futures gap that i do anticipate we will eventually close however we do keep finding that every single day bitcoin has another dump after another dump but it does keep getting bought back up at this extremely critical level now you can see right here especially over on cmes we have this very 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 significant level of around fifty three thousand dollars for Bitcoin. And that's where we had a lot of this resistance support flipping back and forth. So I really do want to hold this, especially over on the futures chart. Now, if we actually zoom in just to the lower time frame, this 30 minute chart does look like we could be putting in a bit of a bear pennant, right? Because we did have the dump. And if we do actually take this and look to go lower from right here, this looks like it wants to bring us all the way down to the mid 40 thousands for Bitcoin. So is Bitcoin going to actually go that low after we had a month of solid accumulation between, you know, the 54 to $58,000 level? It doesn't seem quite likely, especially the fact that we did have this beautiful bounce off of our blue box territory, right? So there is that possibility, like I said, though, that we could have another fake out down here, which then could put in a giant, um, you know, potential bottom. But what I do want to look at is this trend line right here. Okay. So you can see this green line. Now I have actually horizontal levels that I'm looking at and I'll get to those in a second, but this green trend line right here was very, very important for Bitcoin. This is where we consolidated for about a week before breaking way above this $23,000 level. We shot all the way up to our first high right around that 40 $3,000 level. Now this I do think is one of the most critical levels that I'll get back to in a minute, but you can see that this also provided support when we fell down here again. So now that this level has actually reached up to this point because we've been consolidating sideways for so long, I don't want to see us fall below this level because if we do, then we're actually going to lose this trend and the trend has been our friend. However, if we do lose this, we are going to start putting in our first lower low and that is when you do want to get a little bit concerned. Now you can see right here between, I have these levels, so the orange and the red are sort of the last lines of defense that you really want to maintain above. And that is between the $43,000 and $44,800 level. Now, if we fall below this level, then I think the bears are going to be in control and you could see Bitcoin spiraling down to about $36,000. We would still technically be putting in a higher high. I would I would buy this dip personally, but I would prefer, however, if the bulls would have to, would, would keep us above this level right here. So essentially I'm looking for a bounce right here. So those targets directly from today is actually sitting at around 
the worst case scenario would be 47,000. So around 47,000, I would in fact be putting in a long. And if you guys don't know how to do this, how I'm actually accumulating on this long position, you can check out over on Bybit. Also guys, don't forget, they have an insane bonus going on right now, a thousand dollar bonus. So if you haven't signed up yet, definitely check that out. And also not only are they offering an extra $610 in rewards, 200 for using my specific link below, but also also 15% APY. So if you just leave the money there, which I don't recommend leaving money on exchanges, but if you're going to, if you leave it here, you get 15% just for leaving, you know, even if you're not even trading, you can even leave it in like USDC if you don't want to have the uh, volatility or tether actually is what they use. So check that out guys. And if you're interested in learning how to trade, do check out the tutorial popping up above right now. But as you can see, the one thing that I always tell people to do that start getting bearish is, you know, when you zoom into these super small charts, yes, things can get crazy and it does look like maybe we're going to have this crazy bearish scenario. But if we actually look at the macro for Bitcoin, this is on the weekly, we are still beautifully consolidating upwards. In fact, we've had multiple bounces right here off of this uh, previous trend line, resistance flip support, as well as putting in a giant ascending triangle. So as far as I'm concerned, guys, this is still looking extremely bullish. Like I said, I don't want to fall anywhere out of this range. I don't want to see Bitcoin coming down, you know, to these levels. But as long as the bulls can maintain above this trajectory right here, and there's no reason for me to become bearish, even though in the short term we might see some accumulation, uh, some uh, some lower levels. But I would use those opportunities to accumulate, potentially put in the longs, right? So low volume periods go hand in hand with consolidation of price, like Bitcoin Jack says. An uptick in volume on chain in yesterday's capitulation events are likely indicators of renewed, sustained volatility. So Wero chimed in and he goes, "Yeah, but sadly, it doesn't really give us a sense of price." direction. And Jack responded, consolidation in an uptrend generally resolves to the upside. And yesterday was the perfect capitulation spring. This was obviously two days old. He was talking about the dump, but he says, I know where my bet is at. In other words, he is looking for a move to the upside. Now, Willy Wu, probably one of the most famous on-chain analysts, one of my favorites. I Recommend definitely giving him a follow over on Twitter if you haven't. He says, this revisit of lower prices has created incredibly strong price validation for Bitcoin, about $1 trillion cap. 14% of the supply last moved about $1 trillion cap. This is a key line in the sand, imprinted in Bitcoin's price discovery and an area of immense support, right? And that's right around the $53,500 level. It's a very psychological level for Bitcoin, the $1 trillion market cap. He says, as anyone thinking we are going into a prolonged pr price correction needs to know about the rate of new users coming into the network per day. We're in the middle of a bull market with a hockey stick of new adoption, especially in the last two weeks. Coins continue to move to very strong holders, uh, the Rick Astleys <laughs> of the world, and moving that's funny. And moving at all time high rates. Lots of bearishness from technical traders the last few days. Meanwhile, fundamentals are stellar. We're very close to the bottom if it hasn't already been put in. And we have seen that a lot of these big holders, they are late to the game, right? They didn't get the chance. In other words, retail, you and I, the early investors, we actually were the ones that, you know, front ran these guys, right? So they're late to the party. They need to catch up. They're not looking to sell. They're looking to accumulate. They're salivating at the idea of these dips going lower. But Let's talk about the bearish case because I want to stay neutral in today's video. While we have the neutral to bullish call buy option, and this is something we do need to consider because don't forget we do have futures expiring next week, but we do have options expiring uh, this week, right? Friday or some of them. So the buyer with upside price protection opposite happens with the more bearish put options, yada, yada, yada. By measuring each price level risk exposure, traders can gain insight into how bullish or bearish traders are positioned. So here's the situation. While the initial price seems neutral, one must consider that the $64,000 call or buy and higher options are almost worthless with less than three days left before expiry. A month, uh, a more bearish situation emerges when these 6,400 bullish contracts currently trading below $50 each are removed. So 
the neutral the bearish put option dominate with 70% of the remaining Bitcoin contracts. The open interest stands at about 1.13 billion. So pr probably all of this is just a bunch of numbers. Essentially, as things currently stand, the expiries between 57,000 and 64,000 are reasonably balanced, which suggests that the bears have an incentive to keep the price down or at least until the end of this week, at least until April 23rd. So they might just keep it down until until those levels, right? Now, a week after going public, Coinbase shares have also or are going to be delisted from Deutsche Bourse on Friday. So this also affected the price of Coinbase, which psychologically investors you know, relate to the price of Bitcoin. So then the price of Bitcoin falls and it's all just this crazy FUD machine that happens. Why is this happening? Well, there's this code called the LEI code. I don't really know what it is. It's some technical thing, but apparently it's a regulatory requirement for admission of listing and Coinbase needs to get this over to them or else it's going to remain delisted, right? So that had to do with some FUD as well. But in the meantime, we're also still seeing fundamentals for Bitcoin absolutely booming. In fact, WeWork has announced that they're accepting cryptocurrencies as payment. And following Tesla, they are now holding Bitcoin on their balance sheet. We also have... Um, Right here, we have, uh, where is it, from Tesla? Oh, Venmo, right here. Venmo will show users a new feature that lets them invest in four different cryptocurrencies with a minimum spending requirement of $1. So we've seen it on PayPal. Now we've seen it on Venmo. Venmo has 70 million users and growing. I know a lot of people that use Venmo that don't even use PayPal or have never used PayPal. So these are actually very different demographics that we could actually be looking into, right? But nevertheless, we do have JP Morgan's Nicholas Panagurtsoglu in the latest note arguing that the price dip would not see buyers stepping in like last time. Everyone's like, oh, they're going to buy the dip. He says they're not going to buy the dip. He says over the past few days, Bitcoin futures markets experienced a steep liquidation in a similar fashion to the middle of last February middle of last January, or the end of last November. Momentum signals will naturally decay from here for several months, given their still elevated levels. So are these investors still seeing it as an overheated market? Are they saying, I'm not going to touch it until this thing falls another 20%, 30%? Well, I do want to point over to this Bill Miller interview that was on CNBC, where he takes the complete opposite opposite approach. And he actually says that not only is demand booming for Bitcoin, but he thinks that this is nowhere near the top and we are actually just getting started. So I definitely want to play that clip for you right now. And let me circle back to crypto, which is kind of related to all of these questions because there are people in it because their case is, you know, we're going to see dollar debasement and all of these different things. And there, I think increasingly are people in it after hearing what you and Stan Druckenmiller said last fall and realizing the institutional interest is just going to keep growing and growing and they just figure they'll ride that wave. Um, Bitcoin is now up, I think, three. See, when we spoke, I want to say it was around 14. So it's up about four times uh, since we spoke in value. How much more upside is there? Even if you think there's upside, is there a lot more upside, do you think? You know, I, I, it's too bad we had, um, we had uh, video difficulties because I was going to have my Bitcoin hat on when you answered that. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <My baseball cap. laughs> but. Um, yeah, so I mean, Bitcoin. There, there are many, many different ways to look at Bitcoin. The simplest one is just supply and demand. You mentioned uh, the mainstreaming of it and, and the institutional acceptance of it. Uh, and I think you know, supply is growing two percent a year, and demand is growing faster. That's all you really need to know, and that means it's going higher. So I think that um, you know, it's going to have these kinds of uh, volatile days. It was down twenty percent peak to trough over the weekend, but back in two thousand seventeen, which which was a bubble. I don't think I don't think this is a bubble at all in Bitcoin. I think this is now. The beginning of, of a mainstream mainstreaming of it, but um, even back then during the bubble, it went down 20 percent on five different occasions. So volatility is with with Bitcoin. Volatility is the price you pay for for mm. performance. And and I think that you know if it if it it's I think it's like digital gold. That's the that's the first stop in it. And gold is about a 10 trillion dollar asset category, and and Bitcoin's one one trillion dollars, and um, it's it's infinitely divisible or almost so. It's easily transportable and can be sent anywhere in the world if you have a smartphone. So it is, it is a much better version as a store of value than gold. And then so, there's $15 trillion of negative yielding 
uh, uh, bonds out there. Why would you have that when you could own something that at least has, a, has the potential to go up? Mm -hmm. But one thing we do need to consider, what is actually something very dangerous for Bitcoin right now? What is something that could arguably said to be bad for Bitcoin? Well, we have seen the Bitcoin dominance continue to fall and fall and fall. And why is this? Well, it's because investors, new investors, TikTokers, right? They're all talking about these crazy Binance coins that they all are, you know, pumping at the moment. We have seen Dogecoin going absolutely crazy. And what we're seeing is a lot of this liquidity being moved from Bitcoin, from actually potentially legitimate projects like Polkadot or Ethereum or Chainlink, and we're seeing it move into joke coins, meme coins, in many cases shit coins, even absolute outright scams, and investors are just chasing for, you know, quick dollars. They're just looking to get in and get out. And this type of greedy market mentality has never ended well for the investors themselves or even just for the overall crypto space. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, I, look, Dogecoin is funny. Congratulations to everybody that made money on Doge. But guys, Doge is not the future of finance. You know it's a joke, right? I mean, look at what, for example, uh, Stealth Node pointed out. And this is a realistic statistic. 129 billion Doge coins in circulation trending to infinity at a rate of 10 thousand new doge per minute on a network with one five hundred thousandth the security of bitcoin and yet people are fomoing into this First of all, people are not even aware of what they're investing in or they just don't care. And when you don't actually care for what you're investing in and you're just in it to make a quick flip, you're usually the first to panic sell and these can create a cascade of fear, depression, money, people losing money, scams running around, right? And all of this comes to fruition as a nasty, nasty head which ultimately drains and affects the entire crypto market, including Bitcoin as well. In fact, another one that's been really popular is Safe Moon Protocol. I do not recommend whatsoever that you invest in this. Could it potentially go higher from this point? Sure, you might be able to make a quick flip, but look at what happened to the price this morning. Now, I heard that since this came out, it's recovered slightly, but guys, how many people got burned on the way from the top to the bottom? And not only that, but like this Reddit user pointed out, it seems like over on the Safe Moon Reddit, they basically won't let you say anything negative about it. And it appears that there's a bunch of users that were all created right around the same time conveniently that only post these bot like, hey, Safe Moon to the moon. How can I buy some? How can I get some? This is such a great project, right? So these obviously scream scam. If you weren't around for BitConnect, Google BitConnect and you will understand why I cannot condone these types of investments. And in fact, what these are doing is they're not only hurting legitimate, you know, projects, you know, like Bitcoin, etc. Um, but it also just gives a bad narrative overall for the crypto space, right? And yes, it does take away from actual legit projects. And it's unfortunate because rather than invest in a project that's actually building literal infrastructure, you know, decentralized finance to actually help the ecosystem for blockchain and cryptocurrency. Instead, we're, you know, buying essentially Ponzi's, right? I mean, one project, for example, uh, A2DAO. Now, keep in mind, these guys have actually been around for quite some time. They've been providing fundraising to crypto startups since 2017. They've raised over 10 million in private sale investments, and they have over 100 project success rate. They have actually opened up their doors to potential investors um, in the community as well. So as community, uh, if you're a community member, you have the option to vote and invest in all the upcoming projects. You have liquidity mining that's going to be a part of the A2DAO ecosystem, and all upcoming projects will go through a high level audit by their founders and community um, members. So, you know, these are people that are actually, um, they, they are looking into legit projects. They are vetting projects. You know, obviously everyone's just jumping into these TikTokers talking about stuff over on um, you know, the BSC chain, which could be anything, right? Anybody can list anything and make any project. And in turn, you know, you're having, you know, you're having stuff like, um, where, where's that chart that I just had? 
stuff like uh, stuff like this, you know, happen to investors. It's crazy. So, I mean, as you guys can see, obviously, if you purchase and hold the A2 DAO tokens, it's a way to access the fundraising platform. They're mainly used to ensure the community has fair access to the projects. And just to talk about some of the projects that these guys have been involved in. I mean, I don't ha look at these guys. Dia, Mantra DAO, Alliance Block, uh, Linear, Bondly, Terra Virtua, The Graph, Marland, okay? Lots of uh, Definity, lots of really, really great projects that these guys have actually, you know, been behind, legit projects, actually doing things really actually for the ecosystem, and yet have a look at the token. Down another 10% today and actually at its lowest point. So, I mean, what's going to eventually happen, guys? And I'm not telling you to go buy it right now. This could be an opportunity to buy the ATD token. I'm not telling you to do that. But what I am saying is that after everybody's done investing in all of these, you know, crazy, just really scammy-esque type, you know, um, you know, pump and dump projects, I do think the money's going to flow back into the legit projects, the legit, uh, you know, DeFi ecosystem, uh, you know, I, like, for example, one thing that I do, like, for example, over on, um, okay, like Cake, let's take Cake, for example, right? I mean, Pancake Swap, it's basically a Uniswap uh, competitor. Now, Uniswap is sitting at about, what is Uniswap sitting at, just to check it out, 16 billion, right? Yeah, 16 point seven billion. So having a look at something like cake, if you're actually into the Binance ecosystem, then you'll see that, you know, this could potentially be something worth investing in. Now do keep in mind, it's up 177% in just the past 30 days. But obviously, the ecosystem that pancake swap is actually trying to build is something potentially useful for the DeFi space. However, however, some of the tokens within the ecosystem are the ones that you need to be careful of, right? That's why I like to invest in, 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 in infrastructure. You know, the infrastructure tokens are usually the ones that are going to outlast the other ones. That's why you still see things, you know, like Ethereum, for example. Ethereum is doing quite well today. Ethereum is an ecosystem infrastructure. BNB is an ecosystem infrastructure. Solana and, and Cosmos are ecosystem infrastructures, right? Kusama as well. Um, you know, Doge is, is a meme coin, right? That has ridiculously high inflation. So that's basically all I wanted to say today, guys. I just wanted to give a little bit of a warning that when you see these types of things in the markets, when you're seeing, you know, these TikTokers just basically pumping literally any coin that has literally no fundamentals under the sun. And, you know, you are seeing these crazy, um, these crazy moves like this. It is a warning sign and it is scary because, you know, a lot of the liquidity that could be going into legit things like Bitcoin and, and these other top projects are being sucked out of these top coins, sucked out of these top projects. And, you know, they, they're going into these these uh, scams, these rug pulls, these pump and dump things. Right. So, you know, kind of like Tahini's restaurant said, you know, if it's not or it's not Bitcoin, it's blockchain rug pull. It's not Bitcoin. It's all about DeFi. Rug pull. It's not Bitcoin. It's all about NFTs. Rug pull. It's not Bitcoin. It's all about Doge. Rug pull. Fine. It's Bitcoin. Please make it stop. And as a person who has seen the ICO bubble of 2017, I'm not here to say that these altcoins won't survive. The ones that are, you know, that have the legacy, that have rose like the phoenix from the ashes, from the flames, you know, we're seeing them. We're seeing them hit new all-time highs, right? We've seen Ethereum break all-time high. We've seen Cardano continue to move. We've seen Chainlink break all-time highs, but we've seen lots and lots and lots of projects that were hyped from 2017 not make those all-time highs and probably not ever going to make those all-time highs again, right? And if you go back and watch my, uh, you know, you know, go ahead, guys. You can, you can go back and watch my older videos. I was not really a fan of Bitcoin in my older videos. I was very into the altcoins and I was like, why would anybody want this clunky you know, slow dinosaur of a coin. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, over the course of the bull market into the bear market, back into the bull market, you truly do realize the value of Bitcoin. You realize the value proposition, right? And remember, in the beginning of the bull market, you know, all you were seeing were posts about take back your rights from the Fed's printing and helicopter money, own your own assets, right? It's, it's financial sovereignty. It's censorship resistant. And now we're just seeing people, you know, promote meme coins and scams 
scams, and it's really sad to see the shift in things like this. Um, while I do believe that altcoins are a, a vehicle to you know make gains, you do need to realize them because remember, if it's on paper, it's only on paper. You need to be careful. You need to be taking profits, and if you're not investing in something that you actually believe in, chances are at the first sign of danger, you are going to sell, which is why I don't freak out when Bitcoin dumps because I understand it. I believe in it. And I look at these as opportunities to buy the dips, but some of these other altcoins, you can't really say the same for. So just wanted to make that video update for you guys. I thought it was something that needed to be said. I'm not saying like screw all altcoins, all altcoins are scams. No, I think altcoins are going to be amazing. I think we're going to make lots of gains. I just think that it's important to make, make sure you take profits. Don't just FOMO into altcoins because, you know, some TikTokers are talking about them. And at the end of the day, realize that regardless of how people feel about the old school clunky dinosaur tech of Bitcoin, it is here to stay. It is the most secure network on planet Earth. It is what these guys are looking to invest in. And even Bill Miller, just for example, if you actually watched the end of the interview, had mentioned that he even doesn't have any interest outside of anything other than Bitcoin, which essentially is the digital gold. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Once again, if you haven't checked out the amazing deal over at Bybit, so much money in bonuses, and make sure you use the link below in the description for that extra bonus as well. You also are helping to support the channel, so I do appreciate it. But thank you so much, guys. You rock. You're the reason that I make these videos in the first place. And of course, if you have not seen these videos popping up right here, right now, make sure that you click them, check them out, and that is it for me. So thank you so much. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.